Thanks for watching. And I was thinking about math the other day, as I usually do, and I found this insane application that I want to share with you. More precisely, let's find ln of rotation by 90 degrees. Say what? Well, here is where matrices help us, because matrices encode geometric transformations quite nice. More precisely, rotation by 90 degrees is just given by cosine pi over 2, sine of pi over 2, minus sine of pi over 2, and then cosine of pi over 2, which is part of another video I've done, which, boom, simplifies quite nicely to A, which is 0, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 0. And in order to find ln of that rotation, all we need to do is find ln of that matrix. And how can we do that? Well, just by finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So for eigenvalues, it's just determinant of Muhammad Ali. So a minus lambda i. So this becomes minus lambda minus 1, 1 minus lambda which then becomes lambda squared plus 1 equals 0. And oh no, the eigenvalues are imaginary, what? which doesn't scare us because we're brave math warriors. OK, and now let's calculate. Let's see the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals i. So this is null space of a minus i i, i i captain. So minus i, minus 1, 1, and then minus i, then 0, 0. And again, because it's not invertible, we can take one row, leave the other one 0. And for 2 by 2 matrices, 1 minus i, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so we just have to solve x times 1 min plus y times minus i equals 0. So again, here in a 2 by 2 case, it just boils down to guessing two numbers that works. Let's say i and 1. Again, <laughs> use at your own risk. And therefore, a particular eigenvector for this, it's i and 1. And the eigenspace is just the multiples of this. Kind of crazy, isn't it? And therefore, for lambda equals i, it's just i and 1. And the beautiful thing is, for lambda equals minus i, this just boils down to the conjugate, which is minus i1. And therefore, this matrix can be diagonalized as follows. So you put your eigenvectors i1 minus i1, the eigenvalues i0, 0 minus i, and the inverse i1 minus i1 inverse. Good. And this is a. Now what about ln of a? So here's a cute fact. You just have to take ln of those diagonal entries. So ln of a, that is i minus i. It's an i for an i. 1, 1 ln of i, 0, 0, ln of minus i, and then i minus i, 1, 1, inverse. Now what is ln of i? That is also part of another video, but if you take principal logs, if you know what that means, it's just i pi over 2. So this becomes i minus i, 1, 1 and then i pi over 2, because again, i is an angle of 90 degrees, 0, 0, and also principal minus i pi over 2, and then i minus i, 1, 1, inverse. And yes, I am taking principal logs, but technically this is valid up to multiples of 2 pi m, which I'll mention later. And so all we need to do is calculate that inverse and multiply by all those matrices. So this becomes i minus i, 1, 1. Again, i pi over 2, 0, 0, minus i pi over 2. 
and then, so for the inverse it's 1 over the determinant so I think i plus i so 1 over 2i you flip the diagonal entries so 1i and then you do minus the anti-diagonal ones i and minus 1 and what's neat is we don't even have to distribute this over this matrix. We can just distribute it over the diagonal entries, which have i anyway. And so what we get is the following. So this is what the diagonal term simplified to. And the cool thing is you can factor out pi over 4. So you get pi over 4 times this matrix, i minus i11. 1, 0, 0, minus 1, and then 1 minus 1, i, i. And then just calculate all this. So we get pi over 4. Let's say i minus i, 1, 1. Okay. So this will ha nothing happens to it because we have a 1, so 1, i. But here stuff gets multiplied by minus 1, so 1 minus i. All right, great, and let's see if there's a miracle that happens. So pi over four, okay, let's see, i minus i, and then minus one, be careful, uh, plus one, and then minus one, and then one plus one, and finally, i minus i. And so what is this matrix? It becomes pi over four, and let's see, 0, minus 2, 2, 0. But you know, the 2's kind of look ugly. It would be nice to have it in terms of 1. So if you factor out 2, in the end you get pi over 2 times 0, minus 1, 1, 0. And this is ln of rotation. But I know it gets very convoluted. No pun intended, but let's summarize. So in summary, ln of rotation by 90 degrees becomes rotation by 90 degrees times scaling. How crazy is that? So it's almost like we have a fixed point, or I would say it's almost like we have an eigenvector. Right? Wow. And a couple of things though, well, here we did the principal log. If you do logs, the regular logs, then you multiply again. <laughs> 2 times myself, so 2 pi m times this. And you might ask, is this a coincidence? Kind of, because it has something to do very special with 90 degrees. If you do it with general alpha, so if you do ln of rotation by alpha, so cosine alpha, sine alpha, minus sine alpha, cosine alpha, then it turns out what you get is no, not pi over 2, but alpha plus 2 pi m. Okay. And, well, not this matrix, but surprisingly still this matrix. So this is if you repeat this. And here's why it's interesting, because for me it was just a math mind game, but it turns out this does have applications with Lie groups, because, well, what is rotation? It's what's called the special orthogonal group. So this matrix is part of SO2. And what this means is matrices that satisfy A transpose A equals the identity and determinant of A equals 1. And what is this saying? It, it says that if you take ln of this special orthogonal group of dimension 2, then you get a multiple times this matrix, which is an anti-symmetric matrix. matrix. And I believe not only that, so this is what's called little SO2, whatever that means. 
And not only is anti-symmetric, it's also what's called a generator of anti-symmetric matrices. And it kind of makes sense because an anti-symmetric matrix, well, it is a matrix of the form 0 minus a, a0. So if you take ln of this special orthogonal group, then you do get the basis of a special uh, you know, anti-symmetric matrices. And finally, you may ask, is this true also in three dimensions, this fact that ln of special orthogonal group gives you this anti-symmetric matrices? Sort of, <laughs> because in three dimensions, what does a rotation matrix look like? It's, again, part of the special orthogonal group of dimension three. And in this case, ln of A, Again, it's not the generator of anti-symmetric matrices, but there is something, a long formula called Rodriguez formula, and what it is, is just the anti-symmetric part. Part of this Rodriguez formula. Of Rodriguez formula. So it, it does, um, I mean, it's quite impressive. It does generalize in this part. And not only that, why is this ln useful? It even gives us a sense of distance between those rotation matrices. So you have to think of this as what's called a submanifold of three by three matrices. So maybe like a magic carpet. So S of three, and then we can actually define the distances between two rotation matrices as follows. So dab, you know, <laughs> what it is, is just, um, let me see, the norm, as in the square root of sum of squares of entries of a matrix of ln of A transpose B. And again, this sort of calculates the distance between those two rotation matrices. I mean, how cool is that? As I said, it started with a little mind trick, and then I was like, whoa, this does appear in life. I mean, isn't math beautiful like that? All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.